Hi, good morning and welcome to our online service for the 23rd of August. If this is your first time joining us this morning, then you are especially welcome. I'm going to pray and I invite you to join with me as we begin our service together. Lord, we give you this morning. Would you speak to us as we listen to your voice? We praise your name and we worship you. Would you bless our time this morning? Amen. And so we're going to sing our first hymn together. Let us submit to God the sin which always confronts us. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God our Father Forgive us our sins and bring us to the fellowship of his table with his saints forever. Amen. Jesus said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Take a moment now to send the peace to someone by text message or make, write a note and maybe phone them or pray for them later today. As we pray this morning, I want to use the words of the Lord's Prayer as a structure for us to pray through. And so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. 
God, you are so good. You are so worthy of praise. We thank you for everything that you have done and everything that you are going to do. You are holy, you are loving, and we just lift our hearts, our lives, everything that we have in worship to you. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God, we ask, would your kingdom come? Would it be your will that is done here on earth as it is in heaven? For this world that we live in that is so broken in so many ways, and certainly at this time with the coronavirus pandemic, we ask, would your kingdom come here on earth? We pray for your healing. We pray for your love, for your grace, for all the incredible things that your kingdom has and is. Would your will be done here on earth? Give us today our daily bread. God, we thank you so much for the activities of ministries like the Cherry Tree Project, for Fit and Fed, and for the pantry, and so many others. We thank you for the way that they've been able to reach out to provide and to support those that are in need at this time. We ask, would you continue to bless those ministries? Would you continue to provide? As we seek you, as we look to you for provision. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. God, we thank you that you are so gracious and so forgiving for all the times that we mess up, and yet your love never fails. Would you pour in us that grace that overflows to others as we share your grace with those that are in need? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, I'm just reminded of the words of Paul, that when we are weak, we are strong in you. Would we keep our eyes and our hearts fixed on you? Would you guide us? Would you give us wisdom? Would you give us discernment? Would you protect us? so that everything we have, we trust in you. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. God, everything is yours. Everything we have is yours. Our whole lives. We thank you that you just love us so much that you gave Jesus. And would we just be able to share that love, share the good news of your kingdom to a world that needs it, now and forever. Amen. Lord God of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me as we say the Apostles' Creed together in the form of a question and response. You may wish to stand as we say the Creed together, or if that's not possible, you may wish to sit and stay where you are. Whichever you choose is absolutely fine. And so I ask, do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The reading is taken from Psalm 51, beginning to read at verse 10. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. In your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then there will be righteous sacrifices, whole burnt offerings to delight you. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the first reading taken from Luke chapter 6, verses 20 to 23. Looking intently at his followers, Jesus began his sermon. How enriched you become when you are poor, for you will experience the reality of God's kingdom realm. How filled you become when you are consumed with hunger and desire, for you will be completely satisfied. How content you become when you weep with complete brokenness, for you will laugh with unrestrained joy. How favoured you become when you are hated, excommunicated or slandered, or when your name is spoken of as evil because of your love for me, the Son of Man. I promise you that as you experience these things, you will celebrate and dance with overflowing joy, and the heavenly reward of your faith will be abundant, because you are being treated the same way as your forefathers, the prophets. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning and welcome to our second part in our mini-series on the Beatitudes in Luke. Last week we had Richard's upside down room which messed with my head a little and Will talking about putting God's centre stage in our lives. Today we're focusing on the second part of verse 21 and I've chosen the Passion Translation and it says how content you become when you weep with complete brokenness for you will laugh with unrestrained joy it seems a strange translation at first talking of contentment when we cry when we're at our most broken and this doesn't make sense to us when we when we cry we're normally hurting or sad grieving and at times really broken The traditional translation of this passage uses the word blessing rather than content. But some of these words still are quite inadequate when it comes to the pure translation of the word. Blessings, happy, content, they don't quite hit the mark when the word is said to be more like congratulations and a quality to be envied or emulated. Why would those who weep be envied? Why would you congratulate those who mourn or cry? I wanted to find some real wisdom on this, so I went to my younger friends. One six-year-old said, If you cry, it will be better. 
She isn't far off, as we know that when we do cry, God promises to comfort us and shares in our distress. As Isaiah 63 verse 9 says, in all their distresses, he too was distressed. And then Sean, age 10, said, Blessed are those who weep means that God blesses those who have a tender heart. I think he too is really wise. As we're able to cry and mourn, we are able to feel and feel deeply the loss that we are feeling. If you've got younger friends, you may want to ask them what they think it means. Real wisdom can come from young mouths. An older person, William Barclay, a Scottish author and writer of Bible commentaries, said that it's astonishing to speak of joy, to speak of the joy of sorrow, the gladness of grief and the bliss of broken hearted. Our world tells us that it's our right to be happy. We deserve it. Our life should be pain free and carefree. But we know this isn't reality. We live in a broken world and one where there's much pain and sorrow. Jesus was teaching us about this. He was teaching his disciples about this and he was called the man of sorrows. Jesus understood the destructive nature of sin and evil more than we could ever. He understood the pain and the loss. And yet in Hebrews 12 it says, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Jesus understands the purpose of the suffering he endured. He could look towards the joy of making a way back to us from to our Heavenly Father. Whilst we may not always understand the suffering, we can be sure of the goodness of God's heart and the joy that will follow at some point. We don't understand why God allows tragedy to strike. We probably never will. But we can rest in the infinite wisdom and tender mercy. One look at Jesus on the cross and we know he understands our pain. Our second reading was Psalm 51. And in verse 17, David wrote, A broken spirit and a contrite heart, contrite heart are offerings most pleasing to God. We can sometimes become cynical and harden, heart, harden our hearts as we pass through life. But to offer our brokenness and our weeping heart to him and crying out to God's help, crying out for God's help and comfort will indeed be the fulfilment of this blessing. We see in the Lament Psalms, the journey from grief and crying out to God to the praise and the adoration of him when we recall his goodness. Jean Davenport, an American writer says that genuine comfort, the strength to endure the ravishes of the darkness without bitterness and despair is solely a gift. It is the expression of God's own presence the assertion of God's own sovereignty over darkness. God promises to heal the brokenhearted when they come to him. And we read in Revelation his promise that he will wipe away every tear, that there will be no more tears, no more crying in the new heaven and the new earth. But our pain and our loss and our brokenheartedness can draw us into God's presence here on earth. And as we seek comfort, sometimes just being close is what we want. And what joy it is to be drawn into God's presence. I've spoken to many people who testify to experiencing great sadness and great joy. But this doesn't make sense in our normal world. But we're talking about God's world. We're talking about God's kingdom and all the contradictions that that brings. When I was diagnosed with cancer eight years ago, I did quite a lot of crying. 
but I can also testify to never feeling closer to God before or since that time. At my lowest, he held me. In the darkness of the night, he spoke to me, reminding me that the joy of the morning will come. And during this time, my need to worship God for who he was, was overwhelming. Everything was beyond my control. I couldn't fix this. I didn't know the outcome, but still I wanted to worship. One song, Sovereign Over Us, was a song that gave me the words I had when I had none. And it gave me a way through into God's presence. Shortly after being diagnosed, I was on a staff away day. And I hadn't seen my colleagues since being told the news. They waited for me, to console me, to mourn with me, and to pray for me. And as they prayed, as they invited the Holy Spirit to come, I fell on the floor hysterically laughing. The joy of the Lord was upon me. I was laughing with unrestrained joy. How was that possible? Only with God could I laugh in my brokenness. Only in the kingdom of God did we know, uh, did, do we know suffering in our, joy in our suffering, just as Jesus did on the cross for us. At times in my life, and those I know and love have been at the end of themselves. Sometimes that's when we cry out deeper than ever before. This is when God takes us deeper than ever before. And this is our blessing, this is our joy, this is when he turns our weeping into that joy. This is when we encounter our living God deep within our soul. When I cry out to God, I am my, I am my most happiest, my most joy-filled, my most contented. When people might want to congratulate me. When I worship with all my heart, with thankfulness and love is at this time. When everything is stripped away, when we're left with our humble, broken selves, God is closer than ever before. His spirit breathing into us and bringing joy that is so deep that it causes us to be content and causes us to laugh with unrestrained joy. So my prayer for you today is to allow God into your brokenness, your sadness, to acknowledge the pain and then allow his joy to become your strength. Welcome the Holy Spirit into the place of tears. And we can also facilitate this for others, giving them space to talk and to mourn, not minimizing their pain, not minimizing their struggle, but praying for God's presence in the situation. Allowing the Holy Spirit to come and comfort bringing joy and laughter. God's upside down kingdom is beautiful and we are made whole within it. How content you become when you with how content you become when you weep with complete brokenness for you will laugh with unrestrained joy. Come Lord Jesus as we allow you to come be sovereign over our lives and our situations. Amen. And so we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Rejoice the Lord is King. and sing and triumph evermore lift 
As we come to the end of our service, let's pray for God's blessing on our community. God bless Romilly. God bless our key workers. God bless our businesses. God bless our neighbours. God bless all who make this community special. God's favour on Romilly. And may God bless you. May you know the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, today and forevermore. Amen.